This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I add a curve to a belt without it creating curves on the ends? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have a simple belt shape here. So this is just a piece of geometry that's got a little bit of thickness. And if I turn my polyframes on here, you can see I have it split into two polygroups. So the question is asking about having a mesh that's similar to this belt here and generating a curve along the top and along the bottom to say put some stitching on it or some other intricate details. So the process that's normally used for this is if you have your model topology set up with something like polygroups like this, you can come up to the stroke palette up at the top here, then go to the curve function area, and down here you have this frame mesh button. Now when you click the frame mesh button, it's going to look at whatever options you have selected over here, and it will frame the mesh with a curve. So if I come over here and click frame mesh on this model, you're gonna see that I now have a curve being generated around this part of the mesh. So it's tracing that loop of polygons all the way around and it's generating a curve. Now after you have the curve generated, I can now switch to a brush that's an IMM curve brush. So I have a stitch one here. I can say select one of these parts, maybe lower the size this a little bit and then click on the curve and now I'll get this effect. So I'm getting that IMM part to be replicated all the way around the curve that is now on my model. So the question is asking about when doing this, let's say with this belt here, I want the curve to go across the top and I want it to go across the bottom, but I don't want it to be on the ends here. So I want this area to be removed and I only want the curve to go the top and the bottom like it would on a normal belt. So how can I get that effect to happen? So let's just undo this and get back to my original mesh here. So the curves have not been drawn on this. Now, instead of going to the stroke palette and going to the curve functions and just using the frame mesh button here, what I can do is I can go onto my model and set some other markers that then frame mesh can use to establish where their curves are gonna be drawn. And the option I'm gonna use is this creased edges right here. So the frame mesh has the option to do it by border, to do it by polygroups, and also by creased edges. So what I can do with the model I have here is I can go through and establish some creased edges on this mesh. And then, as long as I only have the creased edges option turned on, when I click frame mesh, it's going to generate a curve on those creased edges. So I'm gonna go back to my model here. I'm just gonna turn on my polyframes so you can see this a little better. And I wanna now switch to the Z Modeler brush. So to do this, I'm gonna to go to the brush palette over here, and then down at the bottom, I'm gonna locate the Z Modeler brush. So the Z Modeler brush is a poly modeling tool set, and it is context sensitive. So if you come across your model and hover over an edge, a point, or a poly, you'll get a different action you can apply to the surface of your model. And if you press spacebar when you hover over any of these context sensitive areas, you're gonna get a Z Modeler menu. And in here, you're gonna have a list of different things that you can apply to that area of your model. So I'm going to just hover over an edge here, and then I'm gonna press spacebar to go in the Z Modeler Edge Action menu. And then in here, I wanna locate the Crease Action. So I'm just gonna come over here and click that. And then after I have the Crease Action selected, down at the Target area down here, I wanna change this to Edge Loop Partial. So now I have my edge action set to crease and the target is edge loop partial. So now if I go back to my belt here, I'm just gonna hover over the edge on the top of the belt here and simply click. And this is going to apply a crease along this edge loop that's going to go all the way down to here. And if I zoom in on this a little bit, let me turn off my color here. You'll see that when a crease is applied, you're going to get this double line on that edge. And that's just showing you that the crease is being applied to that area of your model. So I have a crease running across the entire top of the belt here. And then I can rotate down and I can click this bottom edge loop here. And this will apply a crease along that part of the model. So now I have a crease on the bottom and a crease on the top. So now that I've applied these geometry markers to my belt here, now if I go back to the stroke palette up here and open this up, go down to the curve functions and then go to the frame mesh area. I wanna make sure I turn off border, turn off polygroups and only leave creased edges. 
And now when I click this frame mesh button, it's going to look at the mesh and any creased edges that it finds, it will generate a curve. So if I click frame mesh here, you'll see that I now have a curve running along the top of the belt and also running along the bottom. Now after I have this curve generated, I can go back to my insert mesh curve brush. So my leather stitches here, I can pick which part I want to use and I've come across the curve and click and it's going to apply that stitching to my mesh. So now you can see I have that stitching following those curves and you'll see at the ends here, I no longer have that tapered effect. So I've just generated a curve on the top and the bottom of my model. So once again, the process that I used here was to first take the mesh I had, and then I selected the Z modeler brush. I hovered over an edge and pressed spacebar to go in the Z modeler edge action menu. In here, I selected the crease action and then set the target to edge loop partial. Then I came across the top and the bottom of my belt here and applied two creases. And then I went to the stroke palette, went to the curve functions area, Next to the frame mesh button, I toggled off border and also polygroups, but I kept creased edges turned on, and then I simply clicked frame mesh, which now gives me a curve based on those creases. And then after that curve is drawn, you can just simply select an insert mesh brush and have that be applied to your model. So I hope that helps, and if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.